What's up, YouTubers? So, for today's video, I thought we would dive into a little bit of some clothing and gear you might want to look at or some thoughts on that. Since, you know, if you're welding, you don't want to ruin your nice clothes like I do where I don't care or give a shit what I weld in. And <laughs> at the end of the day, I end up having no decent clothes because they all have holes or burns on them. And, you know, I look like a filthy animal. So anyways, let's look at some specific FR clothing that I think you might be interested in. And that's pretty decent. Let's get into it. So to start things off, you know, I used to wear like welding jackets. As a matter of fact, I'll go and grab one here. So this is a Steiner Pro Series. This is what I used to wear all the time. And it's FR fabric. It's pretty warm, I would say. This is like available Tractor Supply or Amazon sells this. It's got like a pen pocket and stuff on the sleeve, which is nice. Like this is overall a pretty nice jacket. They're like 20, 30 bucks. These things will, for one, you look at how nasty this looks from sweating. Very quickly, these look filthy. So if you, all you're doing is shop work, this is fine. They also have snaps on them rather than buttons. So if you're doing like heavy plate welding with MIG or something, you're going to find that the buttons on your welding shirt are going to just... Uh, fibers on the, the string that holds a button on is going to melt off and the next thing you know you can't button it up. So this is more or less good if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy plate welding or just shop only. But it looks pretty filthy and I mean there's just no way around it. It looks scummy. Now recently, a couple months ago, I picked up off of Amazon this guy. And here, let me just get this out of the way. This is made by a company called, I believe it's Bulwark. Bulwark. I have to apologize for my Wisconsin accent here. This is a Category 2 uh, 2112, which I'll put some information up now regarding that so you have a better idea. The 2112 standard basically comes down to minimum performance requirements. I don't have the exact requirements, but you can kind of read there. It gives you an idea. But this is more or less kind of like a heavy duty long sleeve shirt. Now, these are available in things other than high vis, and I just tend to buy the high vis one for a lot of my stuff simply because I do mobile welding jobs occasionally, and it's just from a liability on my part. I want to be able to be seen so that some idiot doesn't hit me like. I've been known to do some pretty sketchy stuff like welding underneath a truck on the, not on the freeway, but pretty close to it. So again, for my own liability's sake, I, I rather not get hit. So they do offer them in all sorts of colors from this company. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't know anyone that works there. I bought this with my own money. And I got to say, I'm pretty pleased with these shirts so far. When you look at how these things are constructed, they're like double triple stitched like way way over built for what i'm used to for a shirt like this the fr as you can see and i'll zoom in on that for you you can see that there's quite a number of uh holes from overhead stick welding underneath a trailer that i've put in there and I did burn my elbow probably on this one right here a little bit, but if you would have saw the amount of sparks that I was eating just to get the job done, you'd be shocked that that's all the damage that kind of came out of it. I know I am. The pockets on here are pretty durable. Again, you don't have snaps on this, so for real heavy duty plate welding and stuff, this probably isn't for you. They do offer this in a tall size, and that's why I tried this. I'm six foot five, six foot six. The older I'm getting, the shorter I'm getting, unfortunately. And this is one of the few welding shirts or anything that's FR rated that's actually tall enough for me. Like if you look, and I'm wearing the other one of these that I have that's high vis, this blue one, and the sleeves actually hit my wrists. Okay. 
almost every welding jacket I buy from the store or have bought, the sleeves are like up here. Like that's no good. Like if I use a short cuff welding glove, guess what? I'm getting my wrist burned. So I do like the tall sizes and they have a real good variety, even up to like 4XL. So if you're like me and you like your tacos, you can get stuff that's available as well. Now this is actually a large tall, I believe, and it fits pretty good for me. This thing, and I haven't washed this in a while, you can see I've been crawling around on the ground and stuff with it, but very, very durable. A negative I will say about this is that if your outside temperature is above about 70, 75, and you're working up a sweat, this is the equivalent of wearing a burlap bag over, over your body very, very hot, does not breathe that well. I mean, it does breathe, but not that well. So this would be perfect sub 70 degree weather or going into fall. Awesome for that. There's no doubt about that, that it would work great for that. But if you're pushing 90 in a shop, this is not the shirt that I would want. Like you will sweat your ass off. I'm, I'm not joking. You know, so it's something to think of. They do make lighter shirts from this company. I just bought a couple more of different ones to try out. And I'll report back in another video in the future on that. Price-wise, this, if I recall, I paid somewhere around 80 or $90. I know that's a lot of money for a lot of you guys. And it is for me too, like I'm a cheap ass. I don't like spending a lot of money on clothing. I mean, almost everything I own is a work shirt per se or something I work in. So I get that the cost is high, but I can tell you like this thing is going to probably last outlast three or four of them welding jackets I got. And that thing's like 30 or 40 bucks. And this I can wear out in public and not look like a tool. <laughs> no offense to anyone, but I think you get what I'm saying there. So this far better for like actual usability than a lot of them welding jackets so it might be something you want to look into again expect to be warm and the other thing i'll say that's also a negative do not dry this on anything other than low 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 i made the mistake of drying this on high and i'll be the first to admit again i eat too many damn tacos but it went from fitting like a glove to like two sizes too small and I permanently wrecked one of these. So it kind of sucks, but do not dry this on high, dry it on low or air dry it and you'll be fine. But don't tell me I didn't warn you because if you buy one of these and do that and then all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, it's five sizes too small. Well, I told you. so. The last thing I'll say about this too, because I almost forgot, FR rating on materials like this is highly dependent on who's making it, what standard that it's for. Some of these are FR for a particular number of washes. I'm gonna look into what this is. So on Bulwark's website, they have a care and use manual that you can download. However, you gotta give them like your email address and stuff, and I just didn't wanna deal with it. I'm pretty sure that the FR rating is only good for a certain number of washes or a period of time in years. For us home gamers, it's really not going to matter much. And realistically, it probably has more to do with liability than anything. You know, when you advertise something as FR and, you know, you can find a way out of a claim, well, you set stuff like number of washes. So you may be non-compliant after a certain point for this. Now for us home gamers, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Like this thing isn't really gonna catch on fire even if the it's been washed a bunch, but it will likely lose some of the protection over time. But again, you know, for us that aren't really doing a, a ton of welding and we're not spray arcing at, you know, 400 amps, I wouldn't be too worried about it. So let's talk about a couple other gear related stuff. So I've shot these in another video before, but these are Lincoln Electric sleeves. They basically go over your arm and I'm not gonna put it on all the way like this and they add an extra layer of protection. Now, whoops, you can see burned a hole through it. Now, 
These, and actually I had them on wrong, they go this way, a little bit wider here. This is great if you don't want to wear a heavy duty shirt so you have better breathability, but you, you know, don't want spatter burning your arms. These will work for that. The downside to these, well one, there's still an added layer and they're going to get hot. Two, as you can see, you can still burn holes through this just as you could this shirt. I would honestly say this shirt is more durable than this, it's thicker. But I actually found a better use for these, I know it sounds ridiculous, than actually putting on your sleeve. And that's, if I'm welding like say a roll cage or I don't know, something on a boat like the aluminum tubes on it for the top, I use these and I always keep these in my welding box and I will wrap it around a tube and now I have a place to prop and not burn the shit out of my hand or my wrist or my arm. And that's where this came from. I was probably welding almost on this and burned a hole. This isn't from just normal spatter. This is me welding on pipe or something. So not only are these helpful, I guess, to protect your arms, but like I said, I really find these awesome for doing pipe work or just, you know, you can fold it like this and set it on something that's hot and then weld, especially with TIG and stuff, and it's, it's a lifesaver from burning yourself. So I would recommend getting a set of these just from a useful standpoint if you're doing any kind of work like that. Another thing that a lot of you guys are well aware of is the welding tips and tricks TIG finger. And if you're not, congratulations, you now are aware of it. This is sold by Jody on the Welding Tips and Tricks YouTube channel. He has a store, they're also sold on Amazon. I highly recommend you pick one of these up. Now I've had this thing for a very long time. I use it with TIG welding all the time. The great thing with this is that I can loop it over, no, keep in mind I'd have a glove on. I can loop it underneath my fingers, rest on something, and then TIG weld. And I can prop literally right on a like borderline red hot metal and not burn my finger. This is one of those things where if you're just welding stuff like sticker MIG on a flat plate, probably not the most useful especially with stick, but for TIG and occasionally MIG use, very, very handy. The other thing I do is much like with those sleeves, I can wrap this around a pipe just like this. Now I got a prop. So even for MIG welding, you could do that and it would come in handy to get some decent welds down and not burn the hell out of your hands. You know, I'm a bigger fan of using thinner gloves then I probably should. Like you'll probably see me doing a lot of MIG welding with TIG gloves on, partially because, and stick welding too, partially because I can get away with it because, you know, I kind of remember that stuff's hot, but I do burn my hand occasionally grabbing something because those thin gloves don't have much protection. But if you're going to use thin gloves for better feel with MIG and TIG, you're, you're probably going to want one of these for sure. They're a little bit pricey, but what you got to remember, guys, is that the money that goes to, from the sales of this helps Jody over there at Welding Tips and Tricks produce videos. And he's probably given more people a free college education than any, any YouTube welding instructor. So I say bite the bullet, buy one, and help support him in what he does. So let's look at a couple more things. Let's talk about hats. <laughs> so I got my two Miller hats that they sent me. Do I weld in these? Uh, I won't lie, I will say yeah I have, and you know what, you look at this, pretty stupid of me, and you know what, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of hair left on my head, but I did weld, MIG weld with this overhead and stick weld overhead and found out why you don't use this to weld in, and you wear a welding cap is because I had some hot sparks come through here and burn the top of my head. Which is funny because somehow, I don't know how, it didn't melt the plastic here, but it definitely melted my hair. So I would highly avoid this. Wear this if you want to go out and look fancy to all the ladies out there. They'll love you if you have a welder's hat on, trust me. This is a little bit better than that because it's not like, uh, how do I say, breathable holy fabric on the back, but it's still not the best. I wouldn't recommend welding in something like this unless you're TIG welding and even then 
I would recommend getting a normal welding cap, which I got one, actually got a couple here. This is a Welder Nation cap. I've had a bunch of these. So Welder Nation, the cap that they make is good. It's, it's pretty durable. The unfortunate thing about this, and I guess it's kind of picking, splitting hairs here, is that, so they're a Canadian company, I believe, and all of these are made in China. Now, I buy stuff made in China all the time, but when you're paying $30, $40 for a hat, and they're coming from China, I kind of have an issue with that. I mean, it's no knocking the quality of the product. I don't have an issue with that. It's stitched nice, it lasts, very durable. However, you know, that's a lot of money for something that they're probably paying pennies on a dollar for. So again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not saying, you know, you can make your own decision. And I do have a bunch of them. It's just, I kind of wish that they were like made in Canada or something, even if they cost a little bit more, just because, uh, I don't know. I think you understand. Now, these are FR beanies. So they are rated, I believe, for FR. No, it's not stamped anywhere, but it's made out of FR cotton. It's a very similar material to that gray welding shirt and the one I'm wearing. I mean, it feels v almost identical. Now, there are some downsides to this. And what I find is, for one, it feels like you're wearing a burlap bag on your head. So it's kind of a little scratchy. It's not the most comfortable. And it's also, I, I would say, very hot. You can imagine if you, if you treat your head like a sack of potatoes in a burlap bag, pretty hot. So in very hot weather, I would not recommend this. Again, under 70 degrees, this is perfect. Like, especially come winter or fall, I, I tend to wear this style or this particular hat more simply because the warmth isn't a negative. Now, I do have some other hats that are my favorite. And of course, I'm not even wearing one today or I don't have one. But Welding Caps by Lori on Etsy. I bought a bunch of them from her and I actually have an order out there now from her for some more. And I much prefer those. They're far more comfortable than this. They're a third of the thickness. Granted, they're not really FR, but I don't have an issue with them catching fire or melting or anything. But from a cool factor, they're so much cooler on your head. And when you sweat it, it leaches through immediately and then air dries. Like it's, they're far better for hot climate. That's what I would recommend. And I'll, I'll put a picture up of her store. Now, I will say one issue with her products, and it's not really a knock against her because they're great. The shipping time and receiving time on them is absurd. I just placed an order yesterday or the day before, and I'm not going to get it till the middle of October. So I believe it's just her, maybe one or two people making the hats, and it's the order out is two to three months before you get it. So it's something to think of, and I think that's part of why Welder Nation has been so, so successful with these hats. It is a quality hat that's durable, but they can get you them in like a week or less. So a lot of people in, are impatient and you don't wanna wait that long. So I think that's part of why this company's been such a success that they were able to mass produce custom fitted hats like this and get them to people fast. Which speaking of that, all of these hats are custom fitted. So this is a seven and a half. You measure your actual dome size, and then you can look on their chart to determine what size based on your circumference that you need for to fit properly. So it's something that's nice because it's not like a shitty ball cap or something else that's just like, the, the store-bought versions of these that are one size fit all, don't even waste your time with them. Get a fitted hat like this that's fit for your head. It makes a big difference. And I'll show you, and I'm kind of a greasy animal, as you can see. Here's the one I'm wearing right now. This thing I've had for two years and wear it constantly. And you can see there's not one frayed, you know, anything on this. Very durable and can see pretty filthy too. Now, same deal with this. Don't dry this sucker on high or when you put it on, it'll feel like you have a fucking vice grip on your head all day. So don't do that. <laughs> Air dry these. Trust me on that.
All right, let's talk about a couple more things and let's end this video. So I wasn't gonna talk about gloves, but I'll just throw a couple ideas out there since some of you watching this may not have seen my safety video regarding it, but you want an appropriate set of gloves. Like I can't stress how important it is because you only got one set of hands and <laughs> burning your knuckles and stuff to the point that your fingers don't work anymore is no fun. So with TIG, I generally use this. This is uh, Tillman 25 AXL. And BXL, I think that has to do the difference is the length of the cuff. Either one of these for TIG are my preferred gloves. You look at how thin these are and flexible, it's almost like you're not wearing gloves. Which, as awesome as that is for TIG welding, is probably not that smart to be stick or MIG welding with these. And you'll see me do it from time to time and honestly get a heavier pair of gloves if you're MIG or or uh, stick welding because I'm telling you these things have so little protection that I was welding a fillet weld with MIG once a couple months back and I literally smoked my knuckle to the point that I didn't want to give up the weld because it was good took my glove off and my knuckle had a blister that was the size of like I don't know like five peas like I'm not exaggerating massive blister so these are not suitable for MIG welding. Stick, you can probably get away with it because your knuckle's far enough away from the hot metal, per se. But get yourself a good pair of gloves. Your, your, <laughs> your body will thank you. All right, let's go to conclusion. So when I was digging around here in the shop, I actually found I've been missing this for a while. Fell behind some stuff. So this is one of them welding caps by Lori Cap lot thinner of material and you can see the durability on it isn't quite as good now mind you i've worn this a ton over the past few years so not quite as durable as a lot of the other caps but this is so much thinner that it's actually breathable like this sucker is probably a third as thick and above 80 degrees i will wear this all day long and i'll be all right the other caps you'll be dying and just pouring sweat can see a little worse for wear here put a little silicone caulk on that or something it'll be fine and also filthy because well you know hey i'm a welder <laughs> not a prince i guess but i recommend getting one of these if you if you weld in hot environments but like i said plan on it not lasting quite as long as other caps the cool thing too with this particular brand is well one it's made in america but two you can order it in different heights so you can have it cover your complete ear half of your ear or just like a ball cap style so you can kind of custom fit it and they are sized by your head size as well same as the other ones so anyways in conclusion well what did we learn today well there's all sorts of fr gear out there and you kind of gotta try a few to see what you like like it goes without saying like this shirt in particular fits me, but you may not like it. So the unfortunate truth is, is that you got to try a few things. And then when you find something, just buy a bunch of it and you'll be fine. For me, because I'm such an oddball shape, you know, being so tall that I have such an issue finding anything that generally when I find something that works, I just buy a bunch of it and then I'm good for a couple of years because it's just that much of an issue for you. More average sized people, you're probably a lot better off than I am. But it is worth buying quality gear, especially for a welding shirt. It like this shirt's gonna last quite a long time and it looks pretty decent as well. So it's, it's worth it to spend a little bit more money because if you got to replace it every three months by time versus a year, you're going to spend the same amount in a year. So just something to think of. Anyways, if you got any questions, comments, or have some gear you really like or a brand you like, let me know in the comments. You know, I'm going to put together a list of stuff that I like and kind of just publish it up on a website so you guys got a good reference point of like stuff to look for for gear because you know it, the shit's so expensive that you hate to buy something and be disappointed and i actually have quite a lot of stuff i'm disappointed with with gear and maybe i'll talk about that stuff i mean i try not to be negative in that sense and show you stuff that i i like and generally speaking i'm not going to show you something i don't like because if i don't like it i don't own it so you know that kind of deal anyways thanks for sticking around until next time